What's up, YouTube? I'm back again with another Five Minute Friday, a little mini series that I haphazardly started last week, and uh, we'll see if I can keep it going. Uh, this week, I want to talk about um, the best bang for buck in cameras, right? So good value for your money. And in the interest of actually trying to keep this Five Minute Friday a Five Minute Friday, I'm going to put five minutes on the clock and see if I can stay within that. So if I talk a little fast, you're gonna have to forgive me. It's a lot to cover in five minutes because I'm actually gonna talk about five different categories uh, that I wanna break down. So five minutes starting now. And the first category is um, cliche, but it's basically what's already in your pocket, right? Um, it's kind of a cop out, but a lot of newer cameras, especially within the past two, three to five years have great cameras already, uh, cameras already in them, right? Our phones have great cameras already in them. They can shoot really good uh, photos that are good enough for social media posting, and some of them even shoot great video. So if you don't have a lot of money, that's something you probably wanna check on is, you know, see if this thing is good enough um, to meet your needs, because I think that the cameras in these phones are better than a lot of our capabilities um, as is. And if we just learn how to use them to the best of our abilities, both in shooting and editing and processing the files that come out of it, it can go a long way. So putting that aside, that's a cop out, but we're gonna count that as number one. Number two, um, the category I would say is, this is like the bottom bottom tier of the, of the budget list. And um, also really good for like beginners trying to learn photography. My favorite camera in this category, or one that I have a lot of experience with is the Canon 5D, the original. So you can pick that camera up, sometimes with a lens even for around in the $200 range. And um, it's a great camera to learn on because it strips it down to the bare essentials, right? You got your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO. Your ISO is manual, there's no auto ISO. So you have to learn what ISO means when it comes to getting a good exposure. It forces you to learn that. And to me, that was very valuable um, when, I, when I first picked that camera up years ago. Um, within that same category, I would say is the 5D Mark II. Also really good use a uh, bargain, uh, the Nikon D700. And definitely what I just saw the other day was a Nikon D750 for around seven or 600 bucks, which is crazy because I used to use two D750s to shoot weddings with a few years ago. And those cameras are great, really good autofocus, great image quality, good in low light, amazing. Last three categories. Uh, if you're trying to shoot video, um, well, photography, you want a camera that's good at photography and video, I would say a uh, good bang for buck these days is the X-T3, Fujifilm X-T3 and the X-H1. Reason being is you get a lot of the same feature sets and quality as you would from like X-T4 without having to pay over $1,000. So getting a body and a body and a grip or something for 800 or less is a good value to me for something that can shoot 4K up to 60 frames a second and it's also a strong uh, photo shooter. So. Fujifilm X-T3, X-H1. Alternatively, any of the, if you want good autofocus with video um, for stuff like this, then any of the Canon bodies that have dual pixel autofocus and a dual pixel autofocus capable lens um, or STM lens, and I think you're pretty in pretty good shape. So one minute left, last two categories. Oh man, let's see if I can do this. Compact camera. There's two or three I would recommend. The first one would be and this is a little biased of me because I really did love this camera, is the Sony RX1, uh, full frame, 35 millimeter F2 Zeiss lens, fits in the palm of your hand, super, super good image quality, slow autofocus, um, and it was extremely expensive at launch, but you can find them used now. I think I saw one the other day for 600-ish dollars, but you gotta watch out because some of them uh, have manual focus mechanisms that are broken which if you don't need manual focus, not a problem for you. And you should get a heavy discount for that. So look out for that. Um, that would be one. Number two, I would say Ricoh GR2. Um, almost, just, almost just as good as the GR3, missing some features, lower megapixel count, but I think it has better colors. And it's the only camera on that list that is truly pocketable. But last but not least, I would say like a Fuji film, something from the X100 series. It's great to shoot on. You get the classic Fuji ergonomics um, and Fuji colors in a body that is just um, really enjoyable to use, I would say. Last card category, what I would say is high performance slash sports or action camera, right? And to me, the best bang for buck there, which has recently really come down, is this camera here, uh, the Sony A9. So this camera I got for $1,700 and for $1,700, you're getting a lot for your money. You're getting uh, 20 frames per second, an amazing autofocus system. I have four seconds left. 
um, good 24 megapixel picture quality and um, and you're getting most of the features set of like a Sony A9 II um, for a fraction of the price. I think this is an amazing value for somebody who's looking to get into shooting sports or anything action oriented. I will probably do a review on this camera here, um, but I like to take my time with, with gear reviews. So if you agree, if you disagree, cool. Let me know in the comments. We talk about it. Um, and then I should see you on the next one. Peace.